Humanity can be an odd bunch. Throughout history, this has never changed. Whilst you may look back at the days of old as more proper and serious times, tomfoolery was still prevalent, and even in the most sincere of moments, calamity took its fair share of the spotlight. In today's video, we're going to highlight 10 hilarious history facts to give you a good chuckle. I'd say grab a brew, but I wouldn't want you to spit it out and ruin whatever device you're watching this on, so perhaps swerve it this time. However, please enjoy this video on 10 hilarious quickfire history facts with a little bit of elaboration to please the algorithm gods because sacrificing a goat clearly wasn't doing it. For our first fact, during World War I, the Germans disguised the ocean liner Cap Trafalgar as the British warship HMS Carmania in order to undertake surprise attacks against the Royal Navy, which worked swimmingly until the SS Cap Trafalgar encountered the real HMS Carmania, at which point everybody was swimming, as they were attacked on sight and the SS Cap Trafalgar was sunk. To make it even funnier, when SS Cap Trafalgar's distress beacon reached a nearby German vessel, they showed up and couldn't tell which ship was which, so they simply turned around and left. For our second fact, famous early to mid 20th century English actor and filmmaker Charlie Chaplin once supposedly entered a Charlie Chaplin look-alike contest without bearing his unique-ish moustache and was placed 27th. Judges deemed 26 people to look more like him than he did. Though it's unconfirmed as to whether or not this actually happened, newspapers at the time did report on this to a limited degree. As we know, newspapers aren't entirely reliable and often are subjective to agendas, but the thought of Charlie Chaplin entering a contest for people who look like him and losing by a massive margin is a funny thought. For our third fact, during the Second World War, a Spanish national named Juan Puyol Garcia was awarded both the Iron Cross from the Nazis and an MBE from Britain's King George VI himself. Initially, he had tried to volunteer for the British, but struggled to make contact. Instead, he went to the Nazis and volunteered to be their spy in England. He would feed them false intelligence from Lisbon, Portugal. After a while, he was contacted by British intelligence, who took him on as a spy and allowed him to send delayed real intelligence to the Nazis to sell his authenticity. The Nazis believed he was a legitimate spy. However, the truth was he absolutely despised them and pulled the ultimate trick. Fact number four. On April Fool's Day in 1957, the BBC pranked its viewer base by convincing them that in Switzerland, spaghetti grew on trees. Through broadcasting footage of what appeared to be a southern Swiss family harvesting the spaghetti from a spaghetti tree, with the narrator deadpan seriously delivering the report. Thereafter, a number of viewers would contact the BBC asking for advice on how to grow their own spaghetti trees. I'd love to know how that narrator didn't burst out into fits of laughter, and just how many takes it took. Fact number 5. When Charles Darwin discovered giant tortoises on the Galapagos Islands, he attempted to ride the poor creatures and fell off, numerous times. It was reported he even brought one home to England. It's rumoured this tortoise was Harriet, who would later be moved to Australia where she lived until 2006, though whether or not Harriet was one of Darwin's giant tortoises is unconfirmed. But for some reason, Darwin looked at a giant tortoise and thought it would be a fantastic substitute for a horse. Fact number 6. Prior to the First World War, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo played out a farce. Initially, Nedjelko Kabrinovich would blow up the wrong car, forgetting his bomb's 10 second timer. He would take an arsenic suicide capsule to evade capture, however it had gone off and didn't work. Finally, he attempted to jump into the river, only to discover it was only a few inches deep, at which point he was caught. Due to the attempts on Ferdinand's life, the driver would take a different route to the one planned. That new route passed a sandwich shop. Here, another conspirator, Gavrilo Princip, was eating a sandwich after the assassination had seemingly failed. When the Archduke's car turned the corner, he must not have believed his luck. Seizing the opportunity with a cheese sandwich in his hand, Princip pulled out his gun and shot Franz Ferdinand in the throat and his wife in the abdomen. They would both die. General Antonio López de Santa Anna, President of Mexico, on and off in the 1840s and 1850s, held a funeral for his leg. After his leg was struck by a French cannonball in 1838, he had to have it amputated. 
Despite being in immense pain, he seized the opportunity for some publicity and gave his lost limb an elaborate burial. However, the publicity didn't make him much more liked than he already wasn't, and in 1844 an angry mob found where the limb was buried, dug it up and paraded it through the streets of Mexico City. His new prosthetic leg would also be robbed, presumably after his death, and now sits in a museum in Illinois, USA, where it has consistently been refused a return to Mexico. For our eighth fact, in 1989, British Pfizer scientists attempted to create a drug they named Sildenafil Citrate as a means to treat high blood pressure, hypertension and angina. However, they discovered it was more effective in causing erections and thus Viagra was born. Moving on to fact number 9, during World War II, German submarine toilets were complex systems that required a specialist technician to flush. German submarine U-1206 would face flooding problems when somebody attempted to flush the bog themselves that caused the sub to surface and promptly get torpedoed by British forces, sinking it. And finally, my favourite fact of the lot, fact number 10. In the late 1980s, just prior to the fall of the Soviet Union, Pepsi was a rather popular drink in Russia, as capitalism eroded at the communist way of life. Having a pariah currency, their money was not accepted in a lot of international trades, so they would exchange vodka for the Pepsi instead. However, when this wasn't enough to meet demand, they'd trade military equipment in exchange for mass imports of the soft drink. And at one point, Pepsi, owned 17 submarines, a cruiser, a frigate, and a destroyer, meaning Pepsi, albeit briefly, had the sixth largest naval fleet in the world. In reality though, Pepsi never took possession of the vessels acquired, and they were sent to a firm based in Norway where they were scrapped due to being obsolete. However, it's funnier to imagine Pepsi going on a mission to accomplish world domination. And that, my friends, brings us nicely to the end of today's short video. Thank you all for watching, we really hope that you've enjoyed it. Be sure to go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and comment whatever ludicrous history facts you might know down in the comments. And with any luck, if you enjoy our content, we'll be seeing you all very soon with another video of some sort at some point. But until next time, please take care, it's now safe to have your brew, and goodbye.